Hello, and we return. We return to Frog Erin or Mouse Ritter, uh, where we are following on from the adventures of our Frog Erin, Salamarak of Silver House. Uh, what Salamarak has been doing over the past, he's been trying to prove himself, prove his worth by completing quests. Uh, he's very grateful for those subscribers who have subscribed uh, and can follow on from the stories. Thank you very much for subscribing if you have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please consider it. Uh, it really does help us out and it keeps the, the channel flowing. Same thing everyone always says. If you have any comments, uh, please put, whack them down and we can have a discussion around uh, Salamarek and his adventures or the whole of the Mousewood game. Uh, and if you like what you're seeing, please hit the like. So, Salamarek. Salamarek has uh, completed uh, two adventures so far, two of his quests. He, uh, the, the first quest was he explored the ruins and returned an artifact that he was seeking, uh, which was being defended, defended by Stevador the Snake. Uh, the second quest that we uh, had, well, this is all rolling from the Frog Errand. Uh, the uh, book by Matthew Morris, uh, who has done lots of things for the Mouse Ritter uh, community, uh, on the solo solo guide of Frog Errant. It's very, very good. Uh, the link is in the blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, and so those were randomly rolled. Now, his second quest was uh, defeating a warband-sized creature, which was the Cat Solomon, uh, where we had to uh, voyage into the human uh, terrain, human town of Trash, uh, or rubbish town, uh, where we found Solomon the cat and brought him to justice for terrorizing the mice of below the tree. Uh, one of the pieces of information that we got from Solomon uh, involved the fairies and the fairy people who are attempting to uh, cause problems uh, with us at the moment. So one of the things that we didn't do was we didn't roll for the progress of our of the fairies within the realm. Uh, and part of what we're going to attempt to do is we're going to go uh, to the area, which I think was area seven, which was uh, Old Crag Farm, where we allegedly there are some fairy agents who are able to change shape and have been uh, tricking mice. Now, a few of the things that we've got uh, progressing at the moment, we have kidnapping mice, tricking mice and leading the settlement into the Feylands, which is what the Fairy Queen is going to attempt to do. Now she has been, she, her, the quest to trick mice has been successful. So possibly in this area where we're at Crag Farm, we'll find some trick mice. But what we need to do is progress those, progress the clocks, like the drama clocks. So for kidnapping mice, at the moment we stay, still have hidden roads and portals, still have shape-shifting agents and still have the uh, endless illusionary silver. Uh, so they add three, so that gives us two. So kidnapping mice progresses to being complete, uh, which means that probably where we go to uh, Crag Farm, we will find, some, which works perfectly, because I've, I've done some already planning for this uh, adventure. Uh, and then we've got leading the settlements into the Feylands, uh, which is only, oh, which is a one, uh, which gives us nothing. One plus three is four. And I don't think that gives because I think it's I don't think that gives anything. Well, I'm gonna say it doesn't give anything. So that doesn't progress. Now, we will so fro our frog salamarak, uh, our, our sorry, our our knight salamarak, uh, will go to Uther of Dragonar and uh, ask Uther. Well, basically, he's given Uther the information about the fairies and how they have sort of set up a small staging post at Old Crag's farm. And uh, Uthar will probably give uh, our, our frog errant the quest. Oh, Sir Lamarack, I would like to charge you with a new quest, Sir Lamarack. You would, Uthar command, Knight Commander. Yes, Sir Lamarack. What we would like you to do is to go to Old Crag's farm And we want you Ribbit. to investigate, investigate the rumours you brought back, Salamarak. Ribbit. Ah, Knight Commander, Ribbit. I would be honoured to fulfil this quest. 
if I can discover any of their agents that we know of, I will vanquish them, thus freeing the mouse people to go about their business with safety Ruby. and not being tricked with false gold. Ruby. Silver, Salabarak. You're quite correct, Knight Commander. And so basically what uh, Lat Salamrek will be doing is I've thought, so I got the website, which I'll put a link in, which will generate, auto-generate an adventure site and utilizing the adventure site rules within the beautiful book that you can get from exalted funerals. It is a beautiful book. It is a hole in the middle, but it's supposed to be there. Uh, and we, uh, so I drew up a map. There we go. Uh, and so what I thought was we will have, there are three agents here. And what Salamarak is going to endeavor to do is Salamarak will attempt to uh, find those three agents. So the three agents will be fairies, they will be able to shapeshift, and they will have a magical spell. I also got uh, ChatGPT to generate some uh, uh, monsters of a fairy ilk, uh, magical fairy type creatures for Mouse Ritter. So I got it to do that. It was a struggle, I tell you. It just first type up time and it turned into generator from there. They were awful. But in the end, it doesn't run very nice work. Well done, ChatGPT, if you're watching. Well done. You're not, but if you are. Uh, if you are, what are you doing out there? Uh, and so we will adventure around this. Now, what this will be is this will be a farm. So we will interpret the roles that we get and we'll interpret them as an old farm uh, which has been left a bit derelict. Now, uh, at any time we roll creature, we will do a 50-50 roll, and if it comes up 50%, 50-50 roll, isn't it? Uh, we will have that being an agent that is disguised as something within the creatures. I've also done a bit of uh, an encounter table. So we'll, we've got confused mice uh, guards, they think they're the fairies, uh, rats that are on the rob, a fairy patrol, a fairies with uh, mice who are under their thrall. We have one owl, which I thought was quite, I didn't look at the stats, but I thought it'd be a, a bit of a, uh, 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 a bit of a challenge. And then if we roll a six for an encounter, uh, we have a fairy agent on a one to five. And then on a six, it's a human, because last episode, I completely and utterly forgot as uh, Frog Errant, uh, our Frog Errant's doom. His current doom is human traps will hound you. So at the moment you've got human traps will hound you, but he also got uh, what part of his doom was for completing the second quest was that he really wants to be a human. So he, he really wants to encounter a human and really wants to discover things about humans. And we completely missed that opportunity last session. So because he's going to a human farm, old crack farm, there is a chance that uh, our Salamarak will encounter some humans and get overly worked up and something might happen to him. I don't know, we'll work it as we go along. So, we will come along to our first section as we've traveled across country uh, from uh, leaving the below the hill, Salamrak will refill. Uh, oh, we also found, I also found out, someone pointed out, uh, repair rules, which are here, completely and utterly missed it. And also, because I fed these rules to ChatGPT and asked him about repair rules, it doesn't mention it. It's here on page eight. Whoever did that, if you're watching this, thank you so much. You're awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, what it basically stipulates is you can return clearer usage dodge for 10% of the original cost per dot cleared. So I will quickly do that and spend the last of Salamarak's ready cash uh, to get ourselves ready. I will return. So uh, several days later, fully equipped, uh, Salamarak is going to uh, take his shiny new armor uh, that he's uh, just had, oh actually I'm gonna write the quest as uh, defeat three agents of fairy queen. Uh, so he's gonna move out, uh, striding from below the tree, looking very purposeful, goodbye. Goodbye, my fair mouse colleagues. Good. Goodbye. Bye. He's off again. He's off again. Bye. Ten to one, he don't come back this time. Bye. You're so cruel. Bye. Bye. Right, he's gone now. Uh, and so he will uh, truck off uh, towards 
Number seven, which is Old Crag Farm. Uh, we will do the traveling thing where he will move into his new sector. So we roll a D6 on a one, an encounter occurs on, so this is actually in uh, as he's approaching Old Crag Farm. On a one, there's an encounter. On that, there's, there, there's no encounter. So two would be an omen, which means there's a hint of an encounter. So no encounter occurs. Uh, and he approaches Old Crag Farm. Old Crag Farm uh, is, is your standard farm. There's uh, gates, piles of hay. Uh, the ground is particularly muddy and there's a very unpleasant smell coming from Old Crag Farm. It's definitely not been kept as well as farms should be, according to Salamarak and Salamarak's view of the world. Uh, and he's going to go, dear, dear me, no, this is no good at all. Oh, but, ah, something ill is occurring here. I can smell, oh, but, I can smell, oh, but, well, I don't want to know what I smell, to be honest. Uh, and he will then approach Old Crag Farm. Uh, having a look around, uh, he can see there are several things uh, ahead of him. Uh, and uh, first off, uh, entering the, the, the main gates and approaching down the uh, muddy uh, driveway. Uh, huge rocks uh, stand in his way as he attempts to hop and uh, skitter and uh, move as swiftly as he can using uh, his innate froggy abilities down this incredibly long pathway uh, towards the actual farm. And to the left and right there are fields that are aren't as well kept as they should be. The, the, some of the crops have grown a bit to seed uh, and he will then decide. So this can be the pathway and then we can have one of the fields which comes out into some other fields. So he will come up uh, and start to explore this first field here uh, and see what he can see. Ends up. So sorry, for the last 15 minutes, I thought you could see stuff uh, on, on where the dice thing is and you can't, I clicked the wrong button. So uh, basically, uh, Old Crag Farm is here. Uh, we've got, we're moving over to Old Crag Farm. So I'll put a mouse reader logo down there and that's what you've seen for a bit because I am an idiot. Hi. Uh, so we've got Cra uh, Crag Farm, Old Crag Farm is here. Uh, so we're going to there. What else did you miss out on? Uh, the dice roll, I rolled a five. Uh, so that's why there's no encounter. Uh, and this is the map which I was talking about and you didn't see. You didn't see it at all. Because as Force said mentioned, I'm an idiot. Uh, so I drew this one here. Uh, there's gonna be three agents, 50-50. This is the, uh, <laughs> this is, this is, I'll put a little bit of text back like future me will put some text black text over this t-shirt here and it will say he's an idiot it will all come clear soon uh, and so we've come in here which is our main entrance way and so we will roll to see what we see in our adventure site so we'll utilize the stamp i thought about finding uh, uh one of the pre-written small adventures but really they're really good but as a solo player there's I, like i would know what's coming next and so it's not as fun so what we do is we uh, stock the room. So the first room is our pathway and it leads down, but there might be various things along the side and we can discover what we see. So we roll a D6 to see what's here. A uh, five is a puzzle. Uh, so then we will roll on the puzzle, which is a D6. A two, three feeding bottles containing different colored liquids. Each is inert, but powerful, dangerous when mixed. Three feeding, oh, okay. Three feeding bottles. Well, let's see what else is in here. Puzzle. On a one, there's a creature. Nope. On uh, a one, two, three, four, five, there is a treasure. Five, there is a treasure. Okay, so let's see what the treasure is. And then we might be able to decide what, what this trap actually is. When placing a treasure hold, roll to see what it holds. Roll D20 twice on the treasure table plus an additional d20 for each of the following questions that are true. In a former house settlement, no. In a highly magical area, no. Defended by a great beast or devious trap. Well, there's a trap, but it's not devious. So let's go yes, three. 
the mice overcame greater than, no. Okay, so we're just gonna do two D20s for this. Uh, a two and an 18. A two is a random spell, and an 18 is D6 times five pips, which is 10 pips. You definitely can see that, can't you? You definitely can see it this time. I've not messed up this time. Uh, 10 pips, and the spell will be, so what we can see, uh, 2d8 with a four is a six. A darkness spell. Create a sum times two inch diameter sphere of pure darkness for dice turns. All right, so there is a, so what we have come across is, uh, let's think. It is a plastic drinking bottle. And in the plastic drinking bottle, we can see at the bottom, there is a pla there is a small bag, and we can see it contains pips in this liquid, this strange yellowy liquid. Uh, and next to it, floating next to it, is a stone tablet that we can see is a spell. Now, this is by the side of the road. So we have bottle holding treasure puzzle. And we are looking to see how we would get Okay, we're looking to see how we would get the thing out of the bottle. So uh, we reach a stick into the liquid to try and get the, uh, the so, so it's a wide necked, like a LucasAid bottle, like one of those, what a wide necked drinking bottle with a screw cap and the cap is off and the smell coming out will roll wits, will roll, uh, wisdom, willpower. So just a plain roll, our willpower is 13. Uh, 13 exactly, that'll do us. Uh, we can coming off. It's a very, it's a very sharp smell that hurts our uh, hurts a Slamorak's nose, and it doesn't like it very much. And so it's a bit nervous about what's inside this. Uh, and the, the label's peeled off a bit, and can't really see what's behind the label. And so it's reaching a sticking, and as he reaches the sticking, the label sort of flips back a bit, and there's a skull and crossbones that are now visible as the stick starts to sizzle. Uh, and burn through. So something in this this bottle uh, is is acidic and acidic smelling, uh, and it's not very nice. So Salamarak needs to work out how to get into it. Now there are two other bottles on either side, smaller ones like vials almost, uh, and they. So we've got a big yellow, and then there's a small blue, and a small red. So basically, Salamarak is going to need to work out. Uh, and I know what's going to happen next. So Lamarack is going to work and needs to work out to get out this spell and these pips. So Lamarack needs to work out, it's daytime by the way, so they're not using torches. So he's standing by the side of this, this pathway, this roadway, uh, with this small blue vial, this small red vial at his feet, this big plastic bottle containing this yellow, horrible liquid, uh, and these things, 10 pips, and this darkness spell floating inside it. And Salamrak will stand there and Salamrak will put his hands on his hips and go, now, now, this is a funny thing, isn't it? But it's nothing to do with why I'm here. So I will note down in my head to come back at some point. And he's gonna continue forwards because that's not why Salamrak's here. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a, a darkness spell and 10 pips. Uh, not really Salamarak's cup of tea, as it were. So I will mark that down, and possibly if we have enough time, we'll come back. And Salamarak will continue con uh, down the pathway uh, towards, let's say, let's say he's gonna continue. So put down the pathway, we will have a gateway, which now you definitely can see this one. He will have, oh, actually. And he will, uh, uh, I need to just sync these up. I didn't sync that up as I turned it on. Uh, he will then need to come down to here. So let we'll say this is, this is where we'll have a gate. There's two gates here. This pathway is kind of finished. There's a big house. Maybe this bit here is possibly, this is a big house that he may need to go into the house and explore inside this very old house. It, the, a couple of the windows are broken. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any lights. There's possibly some dark, but it's very dark. And he can't really see many signs of, of, of humans uh, walking around. And this part here will be outside. So this is outside the fields. Like this goes around the back of the house. This is the front house. So these are fields and various bits outside. And this bit here is 
inside the house, making this up as we go along, the way we like to do. So Solarium Mount Call first, because it's a nice sunny day. He's gonna explore out the front of the house, which leads a gate towards some of the, the fields around uh, Old Crag Farm. And he's gonna explore where there's some old broken, uh, there's an old washing machine. Maybe we'll go around so there's an old washing machine, there's some old boots. There's various things around in the front garden over here. And Salamrak is going to have a look and see. He is going to roll a d6. He gets a four. Ah, oh, it's a trap. Okay, what kind of trap? Maybe there's a washing machine or something, a d8. So there's a trap in this area, an eight. Floor is covered in sticky glue, requires strength to save to break a foot loose. Fine. Okay. Uh, and so this is this is a trap. And, and all right, let's say so on a d6, on a one, there's a creature here for this trap. No, it's not a trap, is it? It's a, yeah, it's a trap. Uh, no, no creature. And on a one and two, there's some treasure. No, there's no treasure. So basically, all it is is uh, as he's exploring and looking around and seeing. Uh, a huge pot has spilt some uh, some substance on the ground, and Salamarak, trap, glue, strength, escape. And Salamarak, look at my drawings. I'm an artist. I am an artist. Uh, some glue is all spread over the floor, and Salamarak being so careful not to be like ambushed, He's watching all the corners, slightest bit of shuffling uh, uh, paper or a sweet wrapper rolls past uh, and he's ducking behind his shield and he's covering the angles and he steps right into the middle of this patch of glue and his little, little delicate flippers are just stuck and he's desperately trying to urge his way out. So what he needs to do, according to this, is uh, floor is covered in sticky glue, it requires a strength save to break a foot loose. So he's going to attempt to break a foot loose foot loose, foot loose, uh, and then he's going to see if he can break one foot loose and then uh, throw himself over onto the side. So he needs to roll 14. He fails. Okay, so uh, he's there. Oh, let's see, let's see. Uh, so this would have been, he traveled there, so that would have been midday, and he's stuck for ages, and he's getting, he's getting, oh, he's getting a bit worried now. What's he gonna do? He's got a hammer, he could try. Uh, he could hammer away at the ground, and try and dig it up and make him be able to move. He has a tongue whip. Maybe he can try and use the tongue whip. He's going to try and use dexterity. He's going to try and do a dex. Uh, his dex went up and I didn't change it. He's going to try and do, his dex is now 14. So his strength is 14, his dex is 14, his will is 13, he's at hit points of nine, and he still has four prowess, which is like luck points. So he is going to attempt to utilize his tongue to catch on the washing machine, as previous mentioned, and see if he can use that to pull himself off. So we are going to, we are going to make a dex check, but with advantage. So we'll take the lowest of these two rolls, which is of three, well, we've done it anyway. So he, he manages to wedge his tongue around something and using the tongue uh, as a sort of like, as a, a, a lasso, a whip, he pulls his feet one foot free, and then he'll get a, an advantage for a second foot, and he pulls the second foot free. And he's swinging there on his tongue, and, oh dear me, I hope none of the other knights can see me doing this. It's quite embarrassing. Uh, and then he will swing himself onto the ground, and he is free of the glue trap, but he's gonna have to watch himself. So, Next, he's going to try, base, what's that creature? Oh, 50, 50, no, we haven't had a creature yet. So next, he will come through. Hmm. As we're outside, we've got one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. How can I do this? So as one of these definitely contains something and we don't know what it is. What about if I, what about if I do, do this? What about if I, Get these little yellow post-its and I'm going to put lightly on the back of one, like a circle, and then I'm going to, can I see that circle? Well, if I try, but that's, that's cheating. And then I'll do this, one, two, three, five. So then I'll put my finger like that and I'll randomly pick one, and then I'll do that, and then I'll do that. Yeah, I am opening my eyes, because otherwise I don't know where my finger's going to be there. 
But I don't know what one I'm picking up over here. I didn't work, did it? This one here. Oh, it's only one left. All right, so I don't know which one's which. So he's gonna come into this first one. Now, no matter what we roll, if we got the circle, then there is definitely an agent here. No agent there. Okay, so what is there? Oh, <gasps> it's another puzzle, oh, puzzle. Okay, so then we've got a creature on a one. Yes, all right, creature. Then we've got a 50-50, one to three is an agent. No, okay, so it will roll on our table. So that's two. There are two rats on the rob. Okay, so what we will have here, let's see if there's a treasure. So this was, uh, this was a puzzle with creatures and one, two, three, four, five, there's, and there's treasure here. Okay, so we are going to say that what we have here is, so Salamarak has gone through a fence and on the other side of the fence, there is an apple store. So there are piles of apples. Now the problem is with these apple stores is that the rats were gonna get to them. And so because the rats, rats are getting to the apple stores, we'll call this B for the treasures, because the rats got to the apple stores, then the farmer had set, uh, what did we say, it's a trap or puzzle? Let's call it a puzzle. The farmer had set a maze type thing to try and get the rats into it and get them lost in it so he could then come, because he's a kind farmer, he's an old kind farmer, but he doesn't keep his farm very well. So it's a humane rat trap, but inside this rat trap, we then have three, three, three pay tail, three or three uh, treasures. We have an 11, which is a box containing, so we have D6 times, we have 500, now this is more like what, what Salamarak is talking about. There's 500 pips, that's 11, eight, a large treasure, an LT, a large treasure, which is a D6, a six, a string of pearls, wow, worth 1,500 pips, two slots. And we also have a third one. So this, this Slamrak, as he's coming in, he's climbed over loads of bags of, of quite, the, I don't know whether you've smelt a large amount of apples that are slightly going off all at the same time, but they're quite pungent. Uh, he's climbed over there, 17, a purse containing D6 times 10, uh, 60 pips. So basically we'll call that 560 pips. Uh, so he can smell uh, all awful, awful smell from apples when they're starting to go. They're just starting to be, be a bit on the turn. Uh, actually, this might be the last one because I will make this like a half hour or so. And so Salamarak will be climbing over those apples and the apples are slightly going and Salamarak's feet. Let's make him make a dex roll. Uh, he can have advantage. No, he can't, he can just do normal. 10 is good enough because he's got uh, 14 dex. And he's just, one apple slips underneath and he just writes himself and he looks down and he can see that there's a, a box with like a maze type thing and there's a, a wire netting across the top and there's these two rats who are attempting to drag uh, this string of pearls out uh, as well as this bag full of pips. And so Salamrak will, so can Salamrak carry that too, too? He can, he's gonna have to dump some of his stuff. He'd have to dump his hammer and maybe his breastplate. If he dumped his hammer and his breastplate, he could carry uh, the pearls because the pearls say they take up two slots. Uh, and so he can see them coming through and they're about to leave this maze sort of uh, trapped area, rats. Uh, I'm gonna just write down because he's about to have a fight with them. Now, what we will do though, is we will give these rats a chance on the roll table to be uh, not just angry, get into a Barney, but to maybe be a bit more NPC friendly, as it were. Here we go, reactions. So uh, 2d6 on the reaction table, uh, we have hostile, unfriendly, unsure, talkative, helpful. We'll notch it all down, so get rid of helpful, and we'll notch them all back by one whatever I roll. So rolling a nine is talkative, which knocks back to unsure uh, what could win them over. So, Salamrak will, will tumble down. And as he tumbles down, the rats are still in the maze and Salamrak can see they've got stuff that Salamrak could actually 
with, with this many pips, he could learn new feats. Ah, what are you two blighters up to, Ruben? Oh God, another frog. You frog, you frog, not to keep bothering us. We're just, we're just doing a job, mate. We're not doing nothing. We're cleaning up for a farmer, innit? No, you're not. You're up to no good. I can tell. How can you tell? Well, what's the problem, innit? We're just here. We're just here cleaning up for the farmer. But you're wearing stripy shirts with bags with swag written on them. Ah, uh, do you know what? I knew we shouldn't have done that this morning. I didn't know. I thought they looked really trendy. All the other rats liked it. And so they will then uh, attempt to wrangle their way out. Let's make uh, let's let's make Salamarak make a will check with advantage uh, to see if they can. They're going to attempt to basically go. Oh, mate! Look, we're just here cleaning up for farmer, isn't it? He's an old geezer. Oh, we've got to help him out. Look, we're just going to take this stuff back. That's all we're doing. We're just going to take it back. And see if Salamarak can be bothered dealing with this. Uh, well, yeah, if it's, if it's given an advantage, it's just a three. Uh, and so, so he's going to go, I'm sorry, but that will, I will brook this. I will brook this no longer. Wait, wait. You shall stand down and leave here at once. Wait, wait. And so what he'll do is, he'll just draw his sword and say, Now then, lads. Oh, no, he's drawn his sword. We're going to have to fight him now, are we? I reckon, I reckon if we can kill a knight, I reckon we might get beers. All right, then. And then we'll initiate some combat. So first off, what we do uh, for combat in uh, Mouse Ritter or Frog Errant is uh, our hero needs to make a dex check to see if he goes first or he's going to get two rats with cleavers cleaving into him. So he's got a dex of 14. Uh, 12 means that Salamarak will go first. Salamarak is going to, so because they've got the two rats and they're both basically trying to get out of this uh, circle hole uh, at the same time to get to Salamarak. Cause he's got gear. We can flog his gear, mate. We can flog his gear. So they're gonna try diving out at him and Salamarak is going to be able to step forwards to basically make it bottleneck them that he only needs to fight one at a time. Although we will give them a chance to hit by, we'll make them do a, make them do a dex check, but with advantage, and then one can reach out and whack him over the top of the other one's shoulder. So Salamarak, so how we work is everyone always hits, and we just roll damage. Our rats have no armor, our Salamarak has big plate mount and a shield. He's gonna maintain the shield and sword, which means he only does a D6 damage, but D6 might be enough. Uh, so doing, so as one of the rats uh, attempts to, hack out with his cleaver so Lamarack will step in slam his shield into his face and then whack him to keep him in the doorway doing five points of damage knocking that rat down to 10 hit points he broke my nose he broke my nose which means he now makes a, a strength check and if he rolls below 10 he's okay eight yes he is we are seeing those numbers aren't we we are good i haven't i haven't messed up that time uh, I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna have him. Uh, and then, so the rats will then, that rat with the broken nose, then is going to lash out viciously at Salamarak, uh, doing three points, which is his armor is two points, his shield is one point. So Salamarak catches it on his shoulder, but there's a click and there's the spark of metal as the rat's cleaver catches against the metal and causes that spark as his friend then he's gonna to attempt to jump out and whack Salamrak in the head. He needs to roll under eight to do that. He does, uh, which means he then gets a hit on, a D6 damage, uh, doing two points. And <laughs> just coincidentally, as he starts to do that, Salamrak trying to adjust himself, lifts up his shield a bit and the rat punches the shield and goes, oh my lord, that stings. Uh, Salamrak then will go, I would advise you to back down, rats. Uh, which they, of course, won't do. Uh, Salamrak. Let's make Salamrak. Let's be. A, a, let's be. Let's be creative. Let's make Salamrak make. So he's going to attempt to get them to to break their will. 
by making a will check will give him disadvantage and if he succeeds will make it the same as he's done damage with his d6 cleaver but it's a bit more intelligent uh, so disadvantage so it's the highest of these two uh, which is a 13 and a 13 is still his willpower so we will try and break the will of the one who we've already broken his nose uh, doing four points they don't have any armor anyway which drops it to a six and so he's looking a bit worried uh, i don't i don't think we stand much of a chance i'm going and he drops to the ground uh his wheel is shattered but as he drops down to his knees dropping his sleeve going all right mate all right the other rat is going to jump through uh, on top of him and attempt to manhandle uh, Salamarak, doing a d6 damage doing what's that that's a five that's two points go through so uh two three two points go through knocking Salamarak down to seven hit points Salamarak is pushed back now uh, away from the entrance meaning that that rat has pushed him out and the rat has left and the other one is on the ground with, with his nose going, oh, he really hurts. Uh, as Salamarak is pushed back, uh, uh, may almost, let's make him make a dex save, a plain dex check, otherwise he may have tripped over. Uh, he does, he trips over. So, so as the rat has dived on him, Salamarak has tripped over a, uh, the massive handle of a spade that he didn't notice there. So it's not like a small spade, it's massive because Salamarak's a frog and a spade's probably like that, isn't it? Like big thick and he's like knocked into the post and he's like tripped over it. And Salamarak now has to quickly get himself back up and then he attempts to attack against the rat. Uh, the rat, then he's doing d6 damage against this rat who isn't injured yet. So okay, oh, you should never have mocked our stripy shirts, mate. I tell you, fella, I'm gonna have you now. That was almost, oh, that's Salamarak. That was Slamrat, wasn't it? Yeah, rat fell over, Slamrat. So Slamrat does six points damage. So as he's going, oh, I'm having you now, fella. Slamrat smacks him in the face with a shield uh, and then follows up with a, a, a butt on the top of his head with his a hilt of his sword. And the, the guy uh, now needs to make a nine strength save. Uh, failing, uh, he goes, oh, oh my. Oh, oh my, then there's two of the frogs there now. Uh, and he goes down. Uh, these two rats will uh, just basically lay there, uh, cuddling each other, uh, feeling very sorry for themselves. Uh, we will say rats in a trap. Now that's a good. That's a good title for the episode, isn't it? Rats in a trap. Uh, Salamrak so now is going to say to them, "Look, you shouldn't have been here, but." I have nothing to do with this breastplate and my hammer. So, oh, he's not gonna to wanna to get rid of his hammer, is he? Well, yes, I think he will get rid of his hammer because we're, we're talking we're talking a string of pearls here. So he's gonna take the string of pearls, 1,500 pips, 1,500 XP if you can get that home. Uh, but he's also got 560 pips, uh, which means maybe he'll dump it. No, he could do with a silver sword. Oh man, this is, this is, this is challenging. Well, he could take 200, he's gonna take 250 of those, leaving, uh, what's that, 260. No, that can't be 260, leaving three, 310. Leaving 310 behind. Oh dear. Uh, so we have cleared these two parts, so I'll write down here, 310 pips, which potentially those rats will have legged it with. And we still have one, two, three, four potential places where we might have an agent as well as any of the other places that may have been an agent. Yeah, so we will then leave Salamarak as he moves away from the uh, Apple storage shed and into the next part of the old Crags farm uh, and attempting to find more, well, A would be nice, uh, fairy agent to vanquish them and free the rat population uh, of below the tree of tyranny, elven tyranny at that, well, fairy tyranny. And with that, may I thank you very much uh, for joining me on this uh, frog errant journey, uh, for observing the adventures of Salamarak of Silver House. Uh, if you get a chance to play Mouse Ratter, Fitter, I would say do so. It's, it's a beautiful game. It's very evocative uh, in its setting. 
Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, if you have subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please give it a uh, thought some thought. Uh, if you like what you've liked, please hit the like. Uh, otherwise, I will see you next week for the further adventures of Salamarak in the game Frog Errant and Mouse Ritter. See you next week.